With the reveal of the new Glow Pikmin and Pikmin 4's release right around the corner, we might have already seen the new Pikmin types this generation will bring. But since there's still so much unknown about Pikmin 4, let's not completely close the door on one more new type being added to the game. Here are a few of my best new Pikmin type ideas that could change the way we approach gameplay. Let's start off with the first new Pikmin type that's a brand new color from a brand new onion. From the Black Onion, it's time to introduce the Arrow Pikmin. While the Rock Pikmin come from a Dark Grey Onion, the Arrow Pikmin will come from a sleek Matte Black Onion, matching this Pikmin type's own coloration. Its pointed head shape and smooth skin texture have one purpose, Aerodynamics. I'm not gonna lie, the idea for this Pikmin type was inspired by playing with Keys eyeballs in the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom game. For those that don't know, attaching this particular item to your arrows in Zelda will give them a homing property, making them guaranteed to hit your target as long as your aim is somewhat close. I was having a lot of fun with homing arrows in that game and thought, you know, I actually think something like this could translate well to Pikmin. When thrown, arrow Pikmin build up speed very quickly and their body shapes allow them to adjust trajectory, leading to perfect accuracy. While they can't be thrown very high, they can be thrown the furthest horizontally of any Pikmin type. And just like in Zelda, so long as they are in the general vicinity of an enemy or other target, they will lock on and act as a homing projectile. We've seen the idea of a Pikmin projectile come to light recently with Pikmin 4's Glow Pikmin. But from the looks of it, this is a big slow shot that requires a group of Glow Pikmin fusing together. Arrow Pikmin on the other hand would allow for quick engagement with enemies at range, leading to an all new type of combat in the Pikmin series. I can envision taking a group of arrow Pikmin on a trek through the bushes on the outskirts of a dangerous area, while stealthily taking long range shots at unaware enemies while still undercover. While using arrow Pikmin at range would be a safe way to combat enemies, there's also a risk to this fighting approach. The ranged projectile approach might not be a smart move against enemies with a high defense, because if you can't take them out quickly, the Arrow Pikmin will be in big trouble. If the target's not promptly defeated, Arrow Pikmin will get shaken off, leaving them vulnerable, which is especially dangerous because in many cases, the long range shot will leave them out of whistle range. While they may not be the ideal choice for taking down big strong targets, Arrow Pikmin will be extremely useful for clearing out out smaller enemies like dwarf bulborbs quickly and safely from afar. And their homing properties will make sniping down hard to hit enemies like snitch bugs or flying shearwigs easier than it's ever been. I mean, Pikmin 4 is already making things easy for us with lock on and auto aim, so why not take it one step forward and add a new Pikmin type that's basically a homing missile? I think it would be fun to take a more ranged attack approach in certain scenarios and weighing out the risk reward of doing so. Plus, I could see the long throw distance and homing properties of Arrow Pikmin being used to interact with other things in the environment. Spot a treasure far off in the distance? If the coast is clear, then throw some Arrow Pikmin. They'll lock on and fly right over to the treasure to begin carrying it back without having the Captain or Ochi go all the way there. A big time saver in many scenarios. Switching over to the next new Pikmin type, from the light green onion, here is the Rose Pikmin. As you can clearly see, this is a wide and stocky Pikmin type, close in size to the purple Pikmin. Their wide bodies play an important role though, we'll talk about that in a bit. Aside from their size, these Pikmin have two other unique features. The rose flower on the tops of their heads, and of course the small but sharp thorns covering their bodies, just like the real world rose flower. This Pikmin type will never have a leaf on its head, only a rose bud. And for those wondering, the flowered version of this Pikmin will have the bud opened up to become a full rose flower. That aside, rose Pikmin will have one major use case in game, and it will be a very unique one compared to the other Pikmin types. These sturdy and spiny Pikmin will introduce a brand new concept in the Pikmin series, enemy automation. This idea was first brought to my attention in the comments by the great Spark937, who came up with this idea and helped me a ton in bringing it to life. A huge thank you to them for inspiring this Pikmin concept, and I'm glad to help share this amazing idea 
with others in the community. So how will automating enemies actually work? And what makes Rose, the new Pikmin type, equipped to do this? The key is their wide frame and of course their sharp painful thorns. When thrown onto an enemy, Rose Pikmin will basically bear hug it and become permanently latched on. The thorns will dig into the enemy's body and their large surface area will make it so they are impossible to shake off. These Pikmin are not good fighters, at least not in the traditional sense. While latched on, they will hit the enemy repeatedly with their Rose Flower dealing extremely low damage over time. We're talking a worse attack stat than even Winged Pikmin. But as we can imagine, even very low damage is very valuable if it's automatic and guaranteed. This will allow us to throw some Rose Pikmin onto a large enemy we don't want to deal with at the moment and effectively automate their defeat. As the Rose Pikmin slowly deal damage to them, the Captain, Ochi, and the rest of the Pikmin will be completely free to do other things in the world. Think of it like throwing a group of Pikmin onto a gate to work on lowering it as you then explore somewhere else with another group of Pikmin to complete a separate task. Since this Pikmin's thorns will allow them to safely latch onto an enemy, you won't have to worry about the Pikmin you leave automating being eaten or attacked. However, automation won't be completely safe in every scenario. If the enemy is in a group, then you'll need to make sure you're there to command the Rose Pikmin as the automation finishes. Otherwise, they'll be left idle and probably eaten by the rest of the enemies in the group. Also, enemies with slick, slippery skin or rock-hard bodies the thorns can't pierce won't be viable for automation. Also, snitch bugs will be able to pluck latched Rose Pikmin right off an enemy's body, so you'll have to deal with any of those first to ensure you're in a safe space for enemy automation. Having an automation system like this will open up a whole new level of real-time strategy done door elements, something that Pikmin 4 is heavily emphasizing. Instead of wasting a precious few minutes dealing with a tough spotty bull bear, just automate it instead by tossing a few Rose Pikmin onto its back as you run by. The more Rose Pikmin you let latch on, the faster the automation will be. But you need to think carefully about how many Rose Pikmin you let latch on, because even though throwing more will lead to faster automation, you'll have less Pikmin at your disposal when you do other things, which might make faster automation not worth it as a trade-off, especially with Pikmin 4's new field limits. Plus, let's say during enemy automation, damage over time is a little bit faster when more than 10 Rose Pikmin are attached. Yes, this would lead to a faster automation process, but if we're throwing 11 or more Rose Pikmin on the enemy at one time, wouldn't it make more sense just to take a group of purple Pikmin and throw 10 or so to defeat it the old fashioned way? This is why the key for Rose Pikmin is going to be long and slow enemy automation. No matter how slow it ends up being, it will still be super valuable, as you'll have that time freed up to do other things as the Pikmin work on the enemy. I envision it like this. Let's say there's a dangerous enemy guarding an area holding a treasure you want to collect. Instead of fighting a potentially dangerous battle, wasting time and maybe losing Pikmin, just let a few Rose Pikmin safely latch on, go spend half the day collecting another treasure or two, and then come back to the area. The enemy guarding the treasure will now be taken care of, and you can safely collect it after having spent your time doing other productive things in the process. I had an idea for a while now about a Pikmin type with a long tongue, and after a couple scrap designs, it dawned on me. There's already something in the Pikmin universe that's famous for its long tongue. But what's that you might ask? It's the Whip Tongue Bulbor, recently sorta confirmed for Pikmin 4. We hear all the time about new Pikmin types, but when have we ever heard about new Bulbman types? I think we all want the Bulbman introduced in Pikmin 2 to return in Pikmin 4. And maybe, just maybe, they could return in a big way. There are several different types of Bulborbs already, so what's stopping there from being various types of Bulbman as well? My next new type is a first for my new Pikmin type series. Only recruitable in certain caves, this is the Whip Tongue Bulbman. Of course, the design here is nothing special, it's just a miniature Whip Tongue Bulborb with a Pikmin leaf on its head. But that simplicity makes it great in its own way. Imagine the depth that could be added to certain caves if they contained various new species of Bulbman only recruitable inside each having special abilities unique to that environment. 
To make another Zelda comparison, having different Boltman types would allow the developers to craft special caves with new, totally exclusive gameplay elements. Sort of like how each dungeon in a traditional Zelda game features a dungeon item that lets us solve new types of puzzles inside. For the Whip Tongue Boltman in particular, its tongue will obviously be its main feature. I'm imagining the Whip Tongue Boltman having three distinct characteristics. One major use of the tongue, and two more minor uses. First, the main use will be utilizing their tongues for exploration and environmental puzzles inside caves. I imagine the cave the Whip Tongue Boltman are found in to be mossy and full of unique underground plant life, with branches and vines everywhere. Some vines will be little hooks that are targetable with a Pikmin throw, and the Whip Tongue Boltman can use their long tongues to grab on and swing over across gaps. The Boltman will swing across vines on their own, but if whistled at one time while attached, they'll stay hanging on the hook and allow the Captain or Ochi to swing on their bodies as a way across the gap. I can picture some specially crafted areas where this mechanic is used. And while the Whip Tongue Boltman wouldn't be able to leave the cave with the crew, their swinging ability would make for some unique level design inside. Their long tongues would also aid them in combat. Whip Tongue Boltman will be tied for the highest attack power of all Pikmin in the game. Not only do they attack with their leaf, but they also smack enemies with their tongues at the same time. And for a last, minor but cute and unique touch, their long tongues would allow them to carefully consume just a tiny bit of a nectar drop. So if you wanted, you could flower a large group of Whip Tongue Boltman basically for free, without the nectar drop being used up. So the standard process in these caves would be to flower any Whip Tongue Boltman you have first, then use up the rest of the nectar drop with other Pikmin types. When it comes to new Boltman types, the Whip Tongue Boltman is only the beginning. With all the different members of the Bulbor family, there's a new Boltman idea that can be made for each and every one of them. Talking about all of those could make for a very interesting video idea in the future. Stay tuned to the channel because I just might have to start working on that one soon. And for my last new Pikmin type, I want to introduce from the elusive orange onion, the Shell Pikmin. This new Pikmin type constantly hides under a large orange shell, and its dome shape makes them sort of resemble a buzzy beetle from the Super Mario Bros. series. I was thinking of things in the real world that are colored orange, and wondering if anything would work to inspire a new Pikmin type. That's when I eventually landed upon this design inspired by a construction worker's hard hat. I thought the hard hat design would work as a perfect shell for a Pikmin, making this type immune to several hazards. Crucially, explosive blasts. This Pikmin type can quickly curl up inside its shell and become impenetrable. While their lack of arms makes them unable to handle bomb rocks themselves, they can be in the vicinity of one's explosive blast without worry, since they'll naturally go into cover under the shell during detonation. So say you have a group of shell Pikmin attacking an enemy. You can also throw a bomb rock at that enemy without worrying about the shell Pikmin being harmed from the residual blast. Their shells will allow groups of them to travel through various hazards. Any sort of fire or poison touching the top or sides of their shells would be rendered ineffective. The only hazards they will have to worry about is from vents and geysers coming out of the ground. Since their shell is only on the top of their vulnerable bodies, their feet and anything below is fair game. This weakness from below will balance them so they're not too strong, and will help other Pikmin who are also immune to these hazards retain their value. For example, since these fire geysers come up from the ground, red Pikmin will still be needed to walk through them since they spit up fire from the bottom. However, However, the shell Pikmin will still be very versatile, as they'll be able to withstand many different types of environments. A group of shell Pikmin can even safely travel across water. If they come across a body of water deep enough, they'll jump in and float upside down on their backs, and they'll follow the captain through the water using the Pikmin leaves on their heads as a sort of rudder to help them paddle and steer. How cute is that? And there you have it, another set of new Pikmin ideas, possibly the last set before Pikmin 4 finally releases. I'll be talking much more about that game, and naturally I'll be thinking up more new Pikmin type ideas as I go along. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and if you like this video, then you might like this one I made featuring another 4 new Pikmin types. That's it for today, and thank you as always for watching.